Hi, William here from The Gate Doctor. Um, welcome to our Gate Doctor Self-Help channel. Because of the coronavirus and the lockdown period, we've decided to create this channel in order for people to resolve minor faults at home and do a bit of gate maintenance to prevent unnecessary breakdown. And the first thing we'll start with is the sliding gate motor. And we'll be showing you step by step how to do a few basic checks. Um, and hopefully that helps people out there. Thanks a lot. But to release the motor, we open the door here. You have to use your key to unlock it if it's locked. Then there's a little thumb wheel inside here on the Centurion d -fast. We just turn that in all the way until it can't go any further. Like that. And then the gate should be able to release. Look at this, the guide rollers. Make sure that they're nice and secure. There's no movement, no play. The bolts are nice and tight and the rollers are spinning freely. Alright, when we come across to this part, look at our receiving bracket. Make sure the gate will run nicely straight into that. Uh, nice centralized. And also push the gate all the way for the flow to open. Make sure that it runs smoothly all the way. Right. If we come to the back here, we can have a look at the gate. We'll just close it slightly again to show it. Make sure your gate's got an end stop. Before the gate runs out of the rollers, guard rollers on the other end. Let's show them the guard rollers here, William. Okay. So your end stop, you've got to make sure your end stop stops the gate before it runs out of these guard rollers for safety reasons. All right, the wheels, if you look at your wheels, you can pick both wheels like this. Make sure that if you move it from, push it in and out, that there's not a significant amount of uh, inflate on those wheels, five mil or so is fine. All right. so make sure that when you push the gate all the way close, if you do have electric fence on the gate, that the, these contacts go exactly in the middle here, not jamming on the side here, preventing the gate from closing all the way. All right. Make sure that nothing is going to stop the gate, like you can see this plant here. So what should effectively happen is you can either cut them or like these, they break easy enough. Get them out the way and just make sure there's nothing that's going to seriously obstruct the gate from opening. The other thing to look at is if you look at the tracker, this track is not bad. Uh, make sure the track all the way from, from the one side to the other side is clear. You can see there's a bit of build up here soil. This we can actually dig out and clean up a little bit. Alright, you can just use a simple garden spade and scrape away all the dirt it's out of the way. All right, what you want to see is that the rack, as you can see, it's well meshed with the pinion gear, but there's a little bit of free play. It's not tight because you don't want the pinion gear to carry the weight of the gate. All right, this you have to check, say, every 30 centimeters or so along the gate and make sure that it's meshed properly all the way from fully open to fully closed. Also, while you're checking the, how the rack is, rack is meshed, make sure that all over the rack is solid, as you can see, there's no movement. So it must be very solidly fitted to the gate. Before the lid's removed, uh, if you can, make sure that the power switch off wherever it comes from. Um, luckily, there's a 12 volt motor, so the only power is in this transformer, and the danger part is here. Pay attention, have a look at this here. This is what people's got to be careful of. There's power there, so don't touch that part if you can't switch it off. It's been installed there probably 10 years ago. It's an old machine, one of the earlier Centurion D5s. But as you can see, this motor came with a DOS, which is, this type of DOS used to get, can get ant infestation into it, and then the motor doesn't know where it is, it can't count. So it's very important to keep the motor clean. As you have a look at all the sand build up around here, around the motor, you can see also if we take this uh, cover off here where the motor is bolted on. Let's pop it off there. Get that clip out there. You can see how ants and whatever has already borrowed sand into here. Now this here all needs to be cleaned out as well. So it doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but you want to get most of the soil away because it will make it not as nice for the ants to want to live in. Alright, let's scratch all that away, nicely all over. See the tracks at the back, there's a bit, uh, again there's a old worm. 
So, mm. so, if you do fishing, you can always come and over some worms, yeah? If you clean it. Yeah. Going to the front of the release here. Yeah. Have a look on this side, yeah. On this side, you can see. Look at all this bit inside, yeah. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but just get most of the dirt out of it. Right, we got the motor nice and clean now, as best we can. Get all the muck out. You can see all around here. Uh, all the sand that was in here and around the side here and inside there with the release wheel works and the door and top here we've cleaned everything out nicely also at the same time pay attention to this uh, if you can focus down here at the bottom this earth wire here there we go right come up to up here you can see this earth wire here must be connected to this earth prong here which one part is connected to the mains earth and you can see this here that goes to the mains earth and the other part goes to the base plate to act as a bit of an earth spike. Make sure that's connected because that's going to save your machine from lightning damage uh, quite a bit. Alright, once all that's clean, put your covers and stuff nicely back. Oops, wrong way around. Make sure the prongs go in place, don't snap them off. Right, and the motor at least now is clean. Now we can move on to the next stage. It says grab it on the actual motor itself and shake it. And there shouldn't be just about any movement. Alright, if there's movement, you need to inspect whether it's the actual base plate in the ground that wasn't cemented in properly, it's come loose, it's rotten away, whatever the case may be, or check that the bolts are tight. It could be that these bolts came loose or something. There's two on this side and one on the other side. Alright, uh, make sure that the motor is nice and sturdy. Right, the next thing to check for is just inspect around this end of the motor, around here, these well seals in here and inside there. Also on this side, these well seals around the, where the pin and gear shaft comes out. So if there was any oil leaks out of the gearbox, uh, provided it hasn't been driven into, then it could leak anywhere, but there could be signs of oil there or here. So if there's signs of oil anywhere, um, you can inspect it underneath here as a little um, dipper stick that you can check the oil levels right and fill it up. We'll go into that into another video, uh, not right now. But just inspect for that and see if there's any damage. Nothing's driven in here, driven to the gate, cracked the gearbox, everything's in order. The next thing we want to look at is the, the wiring. Um, hopefully your installer has installed it nice and neatly like this so you can see what's going on. And hopefully there's no joints anywhere. If there is, um, you're not going to rewire the whole thing. You're going to just make sure if there's any little joints made, check them, make sure they're tight um, and retape them, make sure they're insulated properly. Alright, now we can actually pop this part of the lid off here and just swing this out of the way a bit. So as you can see, make sure all the wiring you can feel on them. Make sure they're all nice and solidly connected. There's nothing loose. This is your common wires here. Even these little bridge wires are important because if they're out, the motor will malfunction. That particular one must be out. It's used for the beam. So because there's beams, this one is out. So that's fine. And just make sure that all the wires that are in is good. The wires are loose. Just use a little small flat screwdriver. And for instance, just to demonstrate, I can just loosen this one for instance. Make sure the wires are neatly twist it together like that if you can zoom into it just like that okay right um, you can make sure that this little there's a little plate in there open it up with a small screwdriver stick this in nicely all the way you can see the power comes back on and just make sure it's nice and nip it nice and tight there we go so this is the procedure if you have to tighten in the cable also you can loosen the PC board here this clips in the sides and then flip it over this way and have a look at the bottom here and make sure that the bottom here is nice and clean as well there's no signs of corrosion or problems just inspect the PC board um, visually make sure there's no obvious signs of ants that's made nest here and caused corrosion no water came in there all right, if you do find a bit of corrosion on the board um, just use a stiff little brush or something and brush most of it off if you can um, just to clean it up uh, the board here can also be uh, unclipped yeah if need be and then the bottom can be cleaned if necessary uh, but don't put oils or spray q20 or things like that onto the board uh, all right the next thing we need to uh, pay attention to is these fuses here this fuse here is if you have pillar lights if you don't don't have to worry about it that's why it's in a little plastic cover because that would normally carry 220 volt and could be a hazardous for shock so there's two fuses you'll have this fuse here which is generally you can 
hear the beams going in and out. So this is what supplies all your auxiliary equipment like your safety beams, your receiver, uh, the receiver that's sitting in here, that's all powered via this fuse. And then this is your motor fuse, the one on the side here. And you can see that this is a sand fault fuse, which means it's a slow blow fuse. It's normally a 16 amp slow blow, is what it must be. Now, one thing I want to, people to pay attention to is these fuses, especially on the motor. If this fuses aren't making good contact, because as people were forcing fuses in, they bend these plates out the way and the fuse will sit not tightly clipped in. The simplest way to do is just bend these things a little bit closer together like that. Can you see that? To make sure that it's the opening is smaller than the actual fuse. So when you put it in, it lit literally clips in place and it's nice and tight. And we can just check this one to be the same. Um, just bend them closed a bit. And make sure the fuse clips are nice and tight. Bad contacts, the motor won't run properly. Next thing we need to look at as well is the battery and the connections uh, of, of the battery wires. Now the battery is very important on a, any 12 volt or 24 volt battery backed up motor. It requires a good battery to run even if the mains is on. The mains are the, purely to trickle charge the battery but it requires a good battery and good connections all the way through through the PC board to the motor. So feel the, the lugs like, so actually this one is slightly loose not too bad because if I pull on it a bad lug will actually when you pull on it it will just fall off. So this one is not too bad make sure there's no corrosion anywhere if it is clean it up now what you can do if the, the lugs is a little bit loose take a, a pliers like this and just gently squeeze them a little bit close not too much you don't want it to collapse and then you'll find it'll plug on nice and tight so you see you actually need a bit of force to get it back on now this is a nice tight connection this is what we must make sure it's very important if those connections on tight, your motor is going to malfunction. Let's get that okay back in place too. Now you see, this is a typical example where I've closed it up a little bit too much. You can use a flat screwdriver like this, just to open it up a little bit in the beginning here. Yeah? Alright, let's try again. There we go, nice and tight fit. And it's tight into the PC board. Now that's very important for the motor to function. Once we check the terminals of the battery, make sure inspect the battery as well that it's nice and flat all over. It's, there's no signs of bulging anywhere. Uh, normally a battery that's got overcharge or something will actually like pop. And you can might have even signs of acid, losing acid here and there. So you can see it's dry, there's no acid anywhere on the battery. Alright, the next thing you have to, to also check is very important to make sure your batteries are being charged, otherwise it's going to last a day or two. So first thing you can notice here, look at the if you go a little bit further away, you can see the piece, the transformer, you'll have to just check depending on the brand of machine you've got. But you can see the lights on there. To simulate it, if I pull the power out on this side, just to show you what it will happen. If there was no 220 volt to the gate, or this unit was faulty, that light will be off. Alright, so I'll put the power back on. You can see that that little indicator light is on, to show that there is mains. Now also, if this thing is doing its job and sends the right voltage to the PC board, on the D5s in particular, You'll see there's a little green light there, it's marked as charge, as you can see there. Alright, and that light will be on. Now this is the feed from the transformer here, to show that the charge is on. And you can see that if I plug that out, although the light is on here, to show there's 220 volt here at the bottom, the light's not on on top, which means there could be something around the transformer, like in this case it's unplugged. So always remember to plug this back on, you'll also see that on this motor the status light. Pay attention to the status mm. light here will give you this uh, two flashes every two or three seconds and those two flashes indicates that there's a mains failure if your battery was uh, flat for some reason not doing its job anymore even although the mains are on that will actually flash three times saying that the battery is not doing its job anymore all right now i'm not going to get into the testing with the meter yeah we'll handle that on another video but if you did have a multimeter if you look on this side here um, with the multimeter set to dc voltage you can unplug one lead then put your meter between the two leads on DC voltage and measure that charge voltage there should be about 13.8 volts on 12 volt systems and about 27 27.6 volts on 24 volt systems all right then you can plug it back on then to do a load test one would generally actually make sure that the mains are off so that we've just got the battery in place you would actually physically put the, your plugs on the battery leads here You'd run the motor, engage it, and actually run it, pressure remote and run it. And the, that battery voltage on 12 volts shouldn't drop below 11.5. And on your 24 volt system, mustn't drop below 23 volts. All right.
But before you close up, double check that both leads are clipped in place still. Um, make sure if you come around to this side that your charge light is still on, that your mains is on. Double check that this plug hasn't been forgotten out, that it's plugged in and that your charge light is on. So make sure about that before you close up the motor. Um, pay attention to this magnet that's fixed onto the gate, onto the Centurion. It must be solidly mounted. Also make sure that there's a very small gap between the magnet and the actual motor casing. You want it to pass as close as possible to the sensor without touching the casing. Um, if the sensor does not pick up the magnet, the gate will run into the end stop and malfunction straight away. You can hear it clicking both directions. You can see so it's close enough, it's doing its job. And now we can test the motor. So before we put the motor back onto normal operation, make sure it's, it's clicked past here with the power on so that the machine knows where the gate position is. Then we turn this thumb without anti-clockwise. Push the gate a little bit, it'll click into place. You can, if you want to make sure ants don't come and make too much nonsense inside your motor, you can literally just take a couple of mothballs, not too many, and if you do this every three months or so, that should take care of them. Um, we tend to, I like to always drop one here next to the DOS. Um, we drop a few in down here by the battery and the bottom of the DOS here. That's where they start. Um, let's put a couple of it just on this side here by the gate motor. Oh, that thing fell out. That cover is not there anymore. Uh, right. And put one up top here with a PC board, maybe even just squeeze one in here next to the receiver. And that will ensure that the hohos and the ants don't enjoy making nests inside there. Now before I want to close this motor, I want to just point out something here. Um, if you can just focus on there. I hope everybody can see the date there. You can clearly see this motor here. This is the time it came off the line. It's the 22nd of the 8th, 2005. Okay. So this motor is... This motor is like 15 years old, all right. this Centurion D5 motor, and this just proves that if a machine is installed properly and maintained and looked after, you can get many, many years of life out of your machine. All right, let me put the cover back on here, uh, make sure it's clipped always nice in place, double check that your cover sits properly in place, that there's no damage to it, that water is going to get in and wet the electronics, and then you can pick and lock it up, put your theft gauge on that one. All right, that's it. Alright, the last thing to check if your gate is fitted with safety beams. Um, this is also very important to check that for some reason the ants and the hojos like to go and make nests in there too. Uh, quite simply, if they make a big nest in there, they literally close it. The gate can't, this beam can't see that one, and it's going to think there's an obstruction, the gate won't close. So let's try and prevent that from happening and let's check them inside. Uh, there's a little plastic thing here, if you can zoom into that, that you need to just pop out like that, and then. There's a little star screw in there, Phillips. Let's screw that out. The beam then pops off from the bottom. And there's a little clip on the top. So when you put it back, pay attention, that little clip there must hook into that cavity on top there, like that. And then you squeeze it down and then put the screw up right. So we open that. As we can see, luckily enough, this beam is nice and clean. If there were some ants and stuff in here, you can clean that all out. There's just 12 volts in here, nothing to shock. Put that little space in there. You've got to be gentle with this plastics. Um, a little clip up there. Right, and clip it up. See, there's a little clip that holds it. Check that there's nothing that can uh, cause problems. Make sure this is nice and solid, the casing onto the wall. So I put it at the bottom in first again. There's a little locating uh, cavities down there at the bottom. And just get that in nicely. And then clip the top in. Place. Right, make sure your wiring, double check your wiring to make sure it's nice and solid, there's nothing loose, nothing that's going to short, everything's in place nicely, and then you can pop a little mothball, especially if you find you have problems with ants, and constantly having problems with ants, make sure the housing is nice and clean, also inspect your housing, make sure that it's reasonably clean, and not cracked or anything, because if there's any damage to this case, you know, the housing water is going to get you, and the gate's going to drop you. So put a little buff ball in there, put the cover on the top, make sure it's clipped in the top nicely, clip the bottom in, and we get our little screw, and let's put a little screw, a bit of glove in there, that's not going to be good, hmm. let's put a little screw back in there, put it in place nicely, right, 
Don't over tighten this too much, just make sure the, the lid is solid. Don't know how you're just going to strip the plastic at the back. Don't forget to put your little cover in here. Most people forget to put them back, but if you can, rather put them in there because it'll protect the screw from rust. Alright, there we go. And do that to both beams. If you have four beams, do it to all four of them. Least nice thing to do is just press your button and make sure that the gauge runs nicely to it and stop where it's supposed to. Let's have a look here at the front. Um, when the gate's in a fully closed position, there should be a little bit of a gap left there. It doesn't force itself into anything. And if it's, a, it's a fully closed position, just press the button again and just make sure that the gate will run all the way to a fully open position. And if your gate was set to auto close, also make sure that it will auto close itself. At the same time, when the gate starts to close, we also just test the beam function and make sure that the beams are doing their job. This gate is set to condominium fire it, it's closing straight away, break the beam, or break the beam and just stop and reopen. Alright. So you can see that the gate is functioning as expected. Includes the maintenance on the sliding gate motor. Um, we did make this video because of the COVID-19 and the lockdown period, but people can also use these videos in future, also just to do a bit of maintenance it up. And thanks for watching.